भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम ज्ञानातिनंद ज्ञानंजनाशलाकया चक्षुरमिल तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्टापित भूतले स्वयं कदाम ददाती स्वापदा वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुत पदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागजात सगना रघुनाथ पीत तम सजीव साइट सवदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पद सगना ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी शुस्ते देवी ब्रह्म हरी प्रिय वंशाकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्ये वच पति पावेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवाणी पाश्चातारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासदी गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे So, welcome to this Nectar Devotion Study. Today is the most, 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 most auspicious day of the appearance day of our beloved Srila Prabhupada, our Savior. And we can imagine where we would be without the mercy and extraordinary compassion of Srila Prabhupada. Um, what we would be doing in these days and months and years with our life without the great mercy and and gift Srila Prabhupada has given us, which is his books, his temples, and this process of uh, devotional service. So we're very fortunate to be able to read and discuss Srila Prabhupada's books on his most glorious appearance day. So wish everyone a very happy and uh, fruitful Srila Prabhupada Vyas Puja day today. So today we're discussing the um, chapter 11, which is titled The Aspects of Transcendental Service. So this chapter discusses the three, the last three of the nine processes of devotional service that Prahlad Maharaj has, has, has explained in, in, in Srimad Bhagavatam. And the these three processes of of servitorship, this dasyam, friendship, sakyam, and atma nivedanam, this surrender, they're very advanced platforms of devotional service. Okay. So we'll discuss each one in in some detail, and then we'll carry on. So this servitorship is. There's two types of servitorship that is explained here, and so I, I put an illustration here. This karmapanam and kainkaryam. So the first is one offers one's activities to Krishna. This is this karmapanam. And the second is serving Krishna in the mood of a personal attendant. And that's kainkaryam. So we'll discuss each one in a little bit of detail. So the first one, offering one activities to Krishna. One can do that in two different ways. So one can offer the fruits of our prescribed duties in our Varnashram Dharma. So, you know, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, yat karoshi yadasnashi yat tadoshi dahasya yat. That, you know, whatever you do, you do it as an offering to me. That is this kind of concept. And in chapter 3 and chapter 5 of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is also explaining this. You know, you do whatever you like. You do your prescribed duties. Uh, but then you offer the fruits to Krishna. So that is a type of servitorship. 
that um, you do it, uh, whatever you like. So there is still some attachment. One is attached to the work, but they are detached to the fruit. So it is, you know, and what work one does, it's work according to Varnashram Dharma. So it is pious work. It is work in the mode of goodness. Um, so, and one, because one is offering the fruits to Krishna, it is considered devotional service or bhakti, but it is not pure bhakti. And we'll come to that in a second. Okay. Now the second aspect of this uh, first um, type of uh, devotional service is one does direct service, including the within the confines or you know primarily with the main nine processes of devotional service. So our Vaishnava acharyas uh, consider this to be pure devotional service. So not that one does their prescribed duties as they like or that they are attached to and then offers their fruit. That is not considered pure devotional service according to our acharyas. But in this offering direct service, it is considered uh, part of pure devotional service. And so what is the difference between offering the fruits and pure bhakti? The, the difference is the attachment to the work. Right? So when one is unattached to the work and unattached to the fruit, then it is pure bhakti. Patram right? pushpam phalam toyam. One does what Krishna wants. Only what Krishna wants. And he offers it all to Krishna. That is pure devotional service. But in the next verse, after Patram Pushman Palam Toyam, is this verse that Krishna says, Yat Kuroshi Yat Ashnashi Yat Shadoshi Dadasti Yat. That whatever you do, you then offer it to me. So Krishna then says, Okay, if you don't want to do what I want to do, it's okay, you do what you are attached to. But you offer the fruits to me. So the difference is when one surrenders. Right? One in Nishkam Karma Yoga surrenders after the work is done. But in pure bhakti, one surrenders before the work is done. And that is why this uh, first level is not considered pure devotional service. Because there is still some desire for work. It is not fully anyabilashita shunyam. Not shunyam. There is still some attachment. Right? So Rupa Goswami distinguishes this due to the attachment to the work. So, but it is considered very close because this Nishkam Karma Yoga, it will lead to bhakti, pure bhakti. So there's not a major division. It is not a big difference, but it is an important distinction that our acharyas comment on between pure bhakti and regular devotion. Okay. So, and we see this, you know, sometimes we become attached to our particular type of work or even in bhakti, we become attached to a particular service. But our goal is to elevate our consciousness, to become detached from the specific service. You know, that my attachment is to please Krishna. And whatever service I can do to please Krishna, that is my happiness. Not that I want to do this service, or I want to do that service. Right? So initially in devotional life, Yes, it's okay to have such attachments because it helps inspire us to take to the process of devotional service. But as we mature, we can elevate to a very a much higher consciousness. And the highest consciousness of this service, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains in the in the in Krishna Kaviraj Goswami discusses in the last chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Very beautiful chapter. If you have time, you can read it. It is most exquisite. And there, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a description of Shikshtashtakam prayers or explanations of Shikshtashtakam prayers are given. And in that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining how Radharani is completely detached to the service. Her attachment is to Krishna's pleasure. She says that if Krishna becomes happy by me being very far away from him, then being far away from him will give me happiness. Because it pleases Krishna. 
if someone else is pleasing Krishna more than me, then I will become that person's maidservant. Now that's a very hard con. You can imagine in our devotional circles, you know, someone is doing some service, we become envious of that person. I want to do that service. But actually, as we elevate our consciousness, we can come to this point of not having any desire. Right? So this, um, this attachment to the work, while we're speaking about it in, a, in the context here specifically about attachment to prescribed duties, it can even bleed into our devotional life. So our goal is can be to come to understand that I'm doing I'll do any service that's given to me as long as it's an opportunity to please Krishna. And that is actually most pleasing to the Lord when he sees that my devotee is willing to do any service for my pleasure. He has no attachment to his own. So we can try to come to that consciousness and that position as quickly as possible. So then second aspect of servitorship is this constant engagement in some kind of service to the Lord as a personal service. So this is the second type of servitorship, this kainkaryam. That we offer direct service to the Lord in the mood of a personal servant. Direct service is offered in both karmarpanam and kainkaryam. But in this mood, the specific mood of personal servant is present. So you may do, you know, shravanam, kirtanam, vishnu, shmaranam, but not in the mood of a personal servant. So this is the distinction between the two. That is the key. Okay. So just uh, Prabhupada gives some discussion on the Varnashram Dharma. So just a few comments on Varnashram system. That the purpose of Varnashram Dharma is to organize our society in a way to allow one to become nicely situated within this material world according to our qualities so that one can then go to the higher process of bhakti. So to create peace and harmony in society, everybody working together very nicely according to our nature so that we can then elevate to the higher purpose. So one may ask, you know, if all we need to do is chant the holy names of the Lord, chant the names of Krishna, then why do we need Varnashram Dharma? And Srila Prabhupada made the comment that he felt that his mission was 50% complete. And why he said 50% complete? Because he did not yet fully establish Varnashram Dharma. And so he left to his disciples to carry on this process. So what is the importance of Varnashram Dharma? If all we are to do is chant to achieve Prema Bhakti, why Prabhupada was so anxious? Because Prabhupada explained that not everyone may be re yet ready to take to bhakti. So if they are not, if we create a nice harmonious uh, society, then the opportunity and potential to come to bhakti will increase. So for those not yet ready to take to the process, this system is very important. Prabhupada was once asked, you know, Prabhupada, if everything you're saying is so great, then why are your programs not, you know, filled with millions of people? You know, why that if this is such an amazing thing. So, Prabhupada said, you know, if you are selling just grains of sand, then many will come. But if you are selling diamonds, only those who have great qualification to buy diamonds can come. So like that, Prabhupada, to create the qualifications to take the bhakti, that taste and attachment, was em emphasizing this Varnashram Dharma. So just a side comment on that. So now we'll talk about friendship. This Sakyam. Krishna is so eagerly to enjoy with all of his friends. So there are two types of devotional service and friendship. That one is service in the mood of Krishna as a superior well-wisher. So the key here is the word superior. And the second is service in the mood of a peer, like Arjuna was sharing the bed with Krishna, as he explains in the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, lamenting, having a very informal relationship, calling him by different nicknames like this. 
So servant uh, friendship as a superior well-wisher and friendship as a peer. Two different types of sakyamas here. And important in this first one, one has full faith and dependence on Krishna as our protector. You know, Prabhupada uses the word confidential and then he explains that it means not confidential in terms of intimate. It means confidential in the meaning of confident in Krishna as one's protector. In the examples given of Draupadi, you know, that through this friendship with Krishna, despite becoming so much atrocities, they endured extreme difficulties. But they were very close friends with Krishna. But they were never discouraged. Why? Because she knew that because Krishna was their friend, then his protection would come. Ultimately, they would be saved. How extraordinary were the difficulties they encountered? Prabhupada explains that even Bhishma Dev, the great warrior, would cry thinking about them. So such extraordinary difficulties they faced. But they were comforted because they had this relationship with Krishna, um, a, a friendship. But it was in the relationship of very strong faith in the protection of Krishna. So they have faith that the superior position of Krishna will be their well-wisher. Right? So that's one type of, of, um, of um, friendship. And... <clears throat> This faith that we're speaking of, it's very advanced. It's not. It's more advanced than what, what we know in the nine steps from from faith to prema. We say shraddha. That is the first step. We have to have some faith, right? That is there. But that faith mater, matures into this vishvasa, this very strong faith, like that of Draupadi, that Krishna will protect. So when we go through our own difficulties. You know, we can think of this very strong faith that Krishna is our well-wisher and protector. And the second type of servant that's described here is Krishna as a peer. You know, one acts as a well-wisher of the Lord. So this is a very mature stage of devotional service. So Prabhupada gives kind of a twist here, you know, that one who preaches this mission, this this uh, message, Krishna said at the end of Bhagavad Gita, is very dear to him. So to please Krishna, one preaches. That means one is becoming the well-wisher of Krishna. We always speak of Krishna being our well-wisher. But in this relationship, one is a um, uh, well-wisher of Krishna. How? Because Krishna is so eagerly awaiting to meet his devotees. He is aching in separation. And so the devotee inspired to ease Krishna's pains of separation begins to spread this mission. And Srila Prabhupada was one great Senapati Bhakta in carrying forward this mission to reconnect as many souls to Krishna as possible. So this is the a type of relationship that exists. And it exists on this spontaneous Raganuga platform. Prabhupada talks about lying down in the temple. You know, if we are on the Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, we know that is one of the offenses to avoid. But in a spontaneous mood, one may perform these. So this is just a little bit about the the servitorship of, excuse me, friendship aspect of serving Krishna, rendering devotional service. Next is surrender. Surrendering everything to the Lord. Atma nivedanam. So, what do we need in order to surrender? We need faith. Without faith, how we can surrender? Right? If I am going to surrender to the process of jumping out of a plane, I have to have faith that the parachute is going to work. Otherwise, I won't jump. 
So to surrender to Krishna, we have to have faith that Krishna is our protector and well-wisher. Otherwise, surrender does not come. We'll always be fearful of our existence. What about this? What's going to happen to that? So this faith is very, very important. And it takes a very strong, mature faith to surrender to Krishna. Right? So it is the first step on the way to prema. But it's also the, the, the maturing of that faith that allows us to surrender the ultimate instruction Krishna has given us. Right? So this is the important part. So there are three types of surrender, three levels. Surrendering of the body, the mind, and the soul. You know? um, Krishna promises to those who surrender, what? His personal protection. He says, I take charge of them and protect them, preserving what they need, preserving what they have, carrying what they lack. So he gives us so much, so many statements in Bhagavad Gita to develop our faith that he is our well wisher. Samasarveshu Bhuteshu, he says. That I am the well wisher of all living entities. So repeatedly throughout Bhagavad Gita, he gives us statements. Throughout Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? So this actually we can ask what else we could ask for? He has given us everything. So to surrender our existence, is it very difficult? To surrender our body, our mind, our soul. Krishna is assuring us repeatedly His protection for us. Right? So when one is no longer concerned with their maintenance, having full faith in Krishna, then surrender happens. So if we are wondering, my surrender, I'm not surrendering to Krishna, we can focus on how to develop this faith in the protection of Krishna. And reading Krishna's pastimes gives us faith, how he's always protecting the residents of Vrindavan, how he's always protecting the Pandavas, you know, Queen Kunti, he's always protecting everyone. So he makes the statements, they are conclusive, but then we see it in evidence. How he protected Srila Prabhupada. It's unimaginable what Srila Prabhupada did. At his age, this difficulties he faced. But he was fully protected by Krishna. So by studying these and celebrating these, it will increase our faith. And that faith is what leads to this Atma Nivedanam, surrender. Because when I don't worry about how I'll survive, who will take care of this body? What happens to my health insurance? You know, what happens? You know, the brahmacharis and those living in the temple, you know, they might wonder, what happens if the temple closes? Where do I go? You know, what's my retirement fund? Who will pay for me my medical expenses? They have faith that Krishna will take care of it somehow or another. So, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you know, uh, Prabhupada gives this reference <coughs> in the book uh, in, in, the, in his explanation of, of surrendering everything I just wanted to read it Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has sung a nice song in this connection while offering himself as a fully surrendered soul he said quote my mind my household affairs my body whatever is in my possession my dear lord I offer to you for your service now you can do with them as you like. You are the supreme possessor of everything. So if you like, you can kill me. Or if you like, you can give me protection. All authority belongs to you. I have nothing to claim as my own. <laughs> How many of us have prayed to Krishna like this? <laughs> that if you like, you can kill me. Or if you like, you can give me protection. No, we ask, give me protection, give me protection. But you can see this is the consciousness of surrender. And how that develops? It develops from faith. When one has strong faith in Krishna, then one says, Krishna, you do with me what you want. 
if you make me broken hearted by not being present before me, or you handle me roughly by your embrace, I am your unconditional servant. This is the final verse of Shikshtashtakam. So, we can see, you know, this mood of surrender. The devotees in, you know, the early days were so surrendered to Srila Prabhupada. They had so much faith in Srila Prabhupada's protection. They, Prabhupada would ask them, you go to take a, a go here to open a temple. And they would go. One, one, of, one amazing story of faith, devotees were riding in the train with Srila Prabhupada. And they reached a station in Delhi. And they were going, I don't, I don't remember where they were going. They were going somewhere further on. And they had stopped. And they were on a long journey. And they had met some uh, one who said that they can help, you know, uh, facilitate some programs in Delhi. And Prabhupada, just in a moment, while this train was stopped, told them, you three, go with him and carry on and follow. They got off the train. And just went. No idea where they were going to even sleep that night. What they were going to do. But they had faith in the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. So this type of surrender. It's very advanced. Very high. So this um, Rupa Goswami says that this devotional service and surrender and service and friendship, it's very rare and difficult to achieve. It's a very advanced process. But Rupa Goswami is giving us how to achieve it very quickly. Right? So this is um, this Atmani Vedam. So these are again the last three of the processes of Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedam of the nine processes of devotional service. So now we'll just discuss the last four. The performing of all endeavors for Krishna. Srila Prabhupada gives some very practical advice here. You know, all of our activities, whatever it is, you know, our sadhana bhakti or our duties of practical life, they should be offered to Krishna, Prabhupada says. He says, if you have a big factory or business, use it for Krishna. It's okay to have, but offer everything to Krishna. So Prabhupada is speaking very practically here. All endeavors whether it's even our work life, our family life, our different society relationships, our relationships with family, use it all in the service of Krishna. It is very practical. And that is Prabhupada's very important uh, instruction here in, in discussing that. Offer a favorite article. The point here is that we should offer the best that we have. You know, Krishna says, Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam. Where we offer Krishna just some fruit and milk, and then we enjoy an opulent feast. Is that the means? No. The point is that we offer the best that we have. If we have a little, no problem. Krishna will be still very pleased. But if we have a lot, we should offer it to Krishna. Whatever the best that we have, we should give to Krishna. And this, we can take this one step further by offering the best we have to the devotees. To the different devotees of Krishna. By serving Krishna's devotees, we, he becomes even more pleased than serving him directly. So whatever we have, you know, we have on our, you know, we're taking a plate of prasad and we have some boiled vegetables and one nice samosa. And we run into a devotee. We can give, of course, if we haven't eaten from it, give the samosa. But often we'll give the boiled sabji. Because we want that samosa. So like that, in our interactions with Vaishnavas, you know, we can try to give the best that we have. And that will ultimately help us come to the point of giving everything to Krishna. Because remember, Krishna does not look at what we give. He looks at what we are keeping for ourselves. If we have lots to give, we give lots. If we have little to give, we give little. Krishna's pleasure is not on how much we give. It is on what percentage of what we have that we give. Okay? So a billionaire giving $10,000 to Krishna is not more pleasing than someone with just $100 is giving $1. So very important. Okay, Being a surrendered soul 
sounds similar to Atma Nivedanam, but it is different. Here, there's a feeling of subservience and dependence on Krishna. So, in Atma Nivedanam, we surrender everything, but it is not necessarily in the mood of subservience. And the example is given of Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj gave everything to Krishna, but it was not in the feeling of this dependence on Krishna. And then just the final one is Tulasi Devi. We see this uh, picture of chanting in front of Tulasi Devi Haridas Thakur. So worshiping Tulasi every day is so important. And we in the in the chapter, Prabhupada is giving many different um, uh, principles from Shastra about the importance of worshiping Tulasi Marani. And that is why Srila Prabhupada established this. Tulsi Puja every day in the temple. Every day. And in the Skanda Purana, there's a statement praising Tulsi as, Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the Tulsi tree, which can immediately vanquish volumes of sinful activities. Simply by seeing or touching this tree, one can, can be relieved from all distresses and diseases. Simply by offering obeisances to and pouring water on the Tulsi tree, one can become, become free from the fear of being sent to the court of Yamaraj. If someone sows a Tulsi tree somewhere, certainly he becomes devoted to the Lord Krishna. And when the Tulsi leaves are offered in devotion at the lotus feet of Krishna, there is full development of love of God. There's another verse. Tulsi is, all, is auspicious in all respects. Simply by seeing, simply by touching, simply by remembering, simply by praying to, simply by bowing before, simply by hearing about, or simply by sowing this tree, there is always auspiciousness. Anyone who comes in touch with the Tulsi tree in the above-mentioned ways lives eternally in the Vaikuntha world. So we can see, very great. So we pray to Tulsi Maharani. You know this, My desire is that you'll grant me a residence and pleasure grows to Sri Vrindavan Dham. Thus, within my vision, I'll always behold the beautiful pastimes of Shishi Radha and Krishna. I beg you to make me a follower of the Kahur Demsas of Raja. Please give me the privilege of devotional service. This very fallen and lonely servant of praise may always swim in the love of Shishi Radha and Govinda. This is the Tulsi Arti that we sing every morning. It's so sweet and mood. So, we're grateful that Srila Prabhupada established in our process, this worship of Tulsi Maharani. Very important in our process of devotional service. So this is chapter 11, the seven additional angas as we are making our way through all 64 angas of devotional service. So next week we'll discuss chapter 12. Any uh, questions or discussion on uh, today's topics or any other topics? no questions, then I'd like to wish everybody again a very, 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 very happy Srila Prabhupada Vyas Puja. Um, and uh, we, we can all uh, take some time to think and to appreciate the great contributions in our life for Srila Prabhupada. So, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Anantakoti Vaishnavinda Ki Hare